right, so our online assignment today is going to be talking about in-text citations. In-text citations mean summarizing, quoting, paraphrasing. Um, we're not really going to talk much about paraphrasing because you shouldn't have to do that much for this paper. We're going to focus on summaries um, and talk about them just a little bit, and then we're going to talk a lot about quoting. So first of all, summaries. You've all done this a uh, hundred times or more. Uh, summarizing is pretty easy. It just means uh, putting something in your own words and you're giving the main idea of the text. So here's my sample summary. The movie The Social Network is the true story of Mark Zuckerberg, a nerdy but brilliant college student who created Facebook. So there are lots of other details to this movie. There are lots of other things that you could say about it but this just gives you the basics. So when you summarize your text, which you do need to do uh, in one of the first couple of paragraphs, all I need is one to, th one to three sentences, I think, um, is gonna be plenty. Don't give me a summary that's an entire paragraph long just for one text. Um, I, I want you to give me the main idea just in case I haven't seen or read your text. Um, but don't go overboard. I don't need to know everything about it. I just need to know the basics. Always make sure it's clear which of your texts you're discussing. So you're dealing with two texts here. Um, just make sure you're identifying which one you're talking about. Um, make sure there's never a time where your reader might get confused about which of your two texts you're, you're talking about. Um, also, every time you use the text title, make sure you're using the proper punctuation. Make sure if it's something that gets italicized that you're using italics every single time. Uh, same thing for quotation marks. I always suggest you do the, the find, um, that little application on your, uh, if you're using Microsoft Word, hit the find button, search for the title and go through your whole paper and make sure every time you've set the title you're using either italics if it's supposed to be italicized or quotation marks if it's supposed to be in quotations. Okay, so that's all I have to say about summaries because most of you don't have any problems with summaries. Quotes are a little more complicated. Make sure you put quotation marks around everything that is directly quoted from your text. If it's a printed medium, so meaning you can hold it in your hands, it's a book, it's an essay, something like that, where you can literally flip through the pages, then you need a page number. If not, don't worry about uh, anything in parentheses. So here's what it's supposed to look like. Um, if it's something printed, you'll have your introduction to the quote, then you'll have the quote itself, then you'll have your page numbers in parentheses, and then the period. If it's not printed, if it's something you watched, a movie, a TV show, a video game, something that you cannot literally flip through pages with, then there's no parentheses. You'll just have your introduction and your quote and the period will go inside the quotation marks. So you can see right there. You don't have to memorize the format. You just have to be able to look it up. So refer back to this lecture or look at one of the sample essays. You want to identify who said the quote. So you need to know the names of the characters if you're quoting them. You can always just Google this or go to imdb.com to get the characters' names. Make sure you say the names of the characters and not the actors. So, for example, from the movie The Pursuit of Happiness, you want to say Chris Gardner says, not Will Smith says. Why? Because Will Smith didn't write that movie. He's just an actor. He is portraying a character. It is the character that is saying those lines, not Will Smith. Um, so make sure that when you use your quotes, you're giving the character's name. And this is for movies and TV shows. This is for fictional things. Obviously, if it's an essay, you'll use the author's name because it is the author saying it. But if it's a fictional thing, um, make sure that you're giving us the characters' names. 
Never start a sentence with a quote. Always introduce the quote first. So don't give me something like this. Um, why? Because that is not proper MLA format. This is what you want to do instead. So notice this first one just has the quote, but the second one has an introduction telling us who says it. So this clarifies. Now we know who's saying it. Agent Simmons says, quote, we call him NBE1, end quote. Um, and then Sam, the other character, Sam corrects Agent Simmons, explaining, quote, that's Megatron. He's the leader of the Decepticons. So this is a better uh, example of a quote because it's correctly formatted according to MLA formatting, but also it lets us know who's saying what and it gives us the context. So that's another thing you want to be careful about with your quotes is don't pick random quotes and just throw them into your essay because I've given you a required number of quotes. Your quotes need to be understandable even if we haven't seen the movie or read the essay. So make sure you're giving us enough information that we understand what's being talked about. Um, this first example, if you hadn't seen Transformers, you might read that and go, wait, I don't understand. Who's talking? What is this about? But the second example has an introduction, has more context, so we have a much better understanding of what's going on with this quote. So if you don't have parentheses, meaning there's no page numbers because you're doing uh, a movie, a TV show, a video game, the period goes inside the quotation marks. So from the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, this is what it's gonna look like. Chris Gardner says, quote, I have to take care of my son. This shows the main theme of the movie, taking care of family. So we've got the uh, character's name, and then we've got that signal phrase says, we've got our quote in quotation marks, the period goes inside the quotation, and then we've got our explanation. Why are we giving this quote? Well, because this shows the theme. So that's from the movie, but from the book, The Pursuit of Happiness, we do have a page number, meaning we do have parentheses, and so this is what we want it to look like. Chris Gardner says, quote, I have to take care of my son, end quote, and then the page number in parentheses, and then the period. And so we still have our introduction saying the, char or the, the character who says it, or in this case, it's um, the book is written by an actual person, so we have his, uh, his name there, our signal phrase, our quote, but we have to include the page number, and then again, the period goes after the page number, and then we have our explanation of why we're using that quote. So it's the same exact thing, only we're including parentheses with a page number in it. Notice there's no, that we don't have the word page, we don't have a P, um, those are different formats. All you need is the number in parentheses. And like I said, you don't have to memorize this, you just have to look it up and double check that you're doing the format in the correct way. So for something written, I just want to show you a couple of examples. So from our SI Parallel Worlds, here's our introduction. Um, this is the first paragraph in uh, the Parallel Worlds essay. In all of popular music today, there are probably no two genres that are more apparently dissimilar than country and western and rap. The one rural, white, and southern, the other urban, black, and identified with the two coasts, New York style versus LA style. Yet C&W and rap are surprisingly similar in many ways. In both C&W and rap, for example, lyrics are important. Both types of music tell stories, and the story is much more than frosting for the rhythm and beat. So this is our first paragraph. If we wanted to analyze this and, and use a quote from it, Here's an example of how you could do that. Denise No, because that's the name of our author, Denise No points out how many people think that, quote, there are probably no two genres that are more apparently dissimilar than country and western and rap. So we just took this word for word right up here, this sentence right there. We've got our page number, because this was a, a printed essay, and then we have to say something about this quote. Why are we including it? No goes on to explain why this assumption is wrong, that rap and country are, in fact, very similar in many ways. So this is just to show you how you can use a quote and the proper way to do 
what I've often referred to as the quote sandwich. So we have our introduction that tells us who the author is and that leads into the quote. We've got our quote with quotation marks. We've got our page number and our period. And then we've got our explanation. Why are we using this quote? Well, because we're gonna talk about how this is a misconception that lots of people have. And we're going to uh, talk about this essay that explains how this assumption is wrong. With songs, so I'm going to just briefly show you. Um, if you're doing a song, you can easily find the lyrics by just going to Google, type lyrics, and then the name of your song. It will pop right up. So if we want to do CeeLo Green's famous song, uh, Forget You, if we're, if we're using the censored version, although we can see here this is the non-censored version, we can find our lyrics. If you're doing a song, you have to include some of the lyrics because that's a really important thing to talking about your songs. So go online, find the lyrics, um, find some that you think are good. So find some of the best lyrics from that song. And then what you can do is use that as one of your quotes. Now, as you were reading the Parallel Worlds essay, maybe you noticed the way that they use lyrics. So you put slash marks in between lines. Ah, let me go back and show you. So if these are the lyrics, then you want to put a slash mark every time something goes down to the next line. So I see you driving around town, slash mark, with the girl I love, and I'm like, slash mark, fuck you. <laughs> okay, so you would put a slash mark between the lines of lyrics, uh, the way that it's broken down here. Anytime it goes to the next line, you would put a slash mark there, and you would just put quotation marks around all of the lyrics. So, this is what it would look like if you wanted to quote from this song. Uh, you see I've got the slash marks here. And so again, you want to introduce who's singing it, and you want to tell us something about the lyrics. So in my example, I say CeeLo Green uses metaphors to give listeners colorful examples of how the girl he loves wants a man with money, with lyrics like, quote, I guess he's an Xbox and I'm more Atari, but the way you play your game ain't fair. So I'm telling who's singing it, I'm explaining why am I using these lyrics? Well, because I wanna show these metaphors that he gives to show um, the difference between himself and the guy with money that his girl wants. So I'm, I'm talking about why am I showing this uh, particular lyric, these particular lyrics, and giving an example. Um, this is an example of a strategy, by the way. So if you can, try and link your quotes to audience goals and strategies as much as possible. For movies and TV shows, okay, I'm gonna show you a quick clip from The Hangover, and then we're gonna talk about it. I'll show you an example of uh, how you could make uh, a quote out of it. Okay, kids, you're in for a real treat today. These gentlemen have kindly volunteered to, to demonstrate how a stun gun is used to subdue a suspect. Right. Now, there's two ways to use a stun gun. That, that Both personal. Really <laughs> <laughs> or you can shoot it from a distance. Now, do I have any volunteers who want to come up here and do some shooting, huh? All right, how about you, young lady? Come on up here. All right. Let's go, handsome. Come on. Not you, fat Jesus. Slide it on back. You, pretty boy. All right, now it's real simple. All you got to do is point, aim, and shoot. All right? Okay. <laughs> you don't really want to do this. You can do this. Just focus. Don't listen to this maniac. Let's think this thing through. Finish him! Go! Oh, yeah! <laughs> right in the nuts! That was beautiful! Good job. Good job. Good job. Good. Hey, we got 
got one more charge left. Anybody want to do some shooting up here? How about you, big man? Come on up here. Okay, same instructions, just point, aim, and shoot. was so jerky but um just to show you now how you can uh take just that little scene and make a quote out of it you could say officer franklin hands the boy the stun gun and encourages him to taser allen saying quote you're holding 50,000 volts little man don't be afraid to ride the lightning this scene is an example of humor a pathos based strategy so see, I explain who the character is, I give context of what's happening, um, I have my quote in quotation marks, and then I talk about why am I using this quote, what does it say about the text? Well, this is a strategy, this is humor. So whether it's a movie, a video game, a TV show, a commercial, um, you're going to use the same basic format for all of those things, as I'm using here with this movie. Give us the character's name, who, who is speaking, um, give us the quote itself, and then tell us why you're giving us that quote. Try and link it to uh, audience goals or strategy, or you could use a quote in the summary to try and uh, show us what the main idea of the movie is. There are a couple of different ways to do it. Um, theme is another thing you can try and link your quotes to. So here are some tips. Good quotes can often be found in the movie trailer or from clips posted on YouTube. So if you uh, don't have the, the time or ability to go back and watch your entire movie all the way through, this is one strategy to help you. Now, if you use a quote from a YouTube clip or from the trailer, you don't need to cite that separately on your work cited. Why? Because it's in the movie. So you're citing the movie, that means you're citing uh, where the quote is, even if that's not exactly how you watched it. So just cite the movie itself, or the TV show, or the video game. You can also quote critics. So uh, if you're having trouble finding really good quotes from the movie, or uh, if you just want to have some additional quotes in there, you can quote movie reviewers, TV show reviewers, video game reviewers, um, those are other uh, potential places where you can find quotes that you can use in your essay. Um, you'll use them the same way though. You want to try and tie those to audience goals, strategy, themes, um, in the same ways uh, that the examples I've showed in this lecture have done. Um, also, you can look at those sample papers, the way that they use their summaries and quotes if you need a little more help and you want to see some more examples. All right, so your writing assignment is to take the quiz. It's already attached um, in the Blackboard homework or, or online assignment section. Um, so what I want you to do is take that quiz. You can use this lecture. You can use your notes. You can look on the web, however you want to do it. I want this to be uh, something that that you you look up the answers the way that you would uh, create your own quotes and, and work cited. So, um, like I keep saying, you don't have to memorize things. You just have to know how to look up the answers. So that's why I'm letting you use all this stuff for the quiz. 
Um, you can work together with other students because again, I think collaborating and teaching each other and, and helping each other find answers um, it is a valuable way to learn as well. All right, so the, the quiz answers are gonna be due the next time I see you in class. Email me if you have any questions.